Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a map map reaction, I guess, and it is maps to change your world view. I enjoy doing map videos, and I mean, yeah, as much as as long as people watch them, I'm gonna keep doing them. But um, yeah, I'm gonna jump into this. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Instagram, my Twitter for those who want to follow me. Same for my Patreon for those who want extra reactions. They get blocked on YouTube. But let's just jump into this. Everybody one. loves maps, unless you're a man in me the included. Who I love a map, using man. gas for directions. Jokes aside, maps can show us more than just where to go. And thanks to the internet, there are almost no limits on what they can be used to visualize. From population indicators to historic misconceptions, let's take a look at some examples of maps that will change your world view. World population density. We know that there are areas of the world that are simply uninhabitable, like scorching deserts, Arctic tundras, and most of Australia. So where exactly Literally the country is the 7.8 billion people living on this planet? This is a world population density map representing the number. Bro, look at Australia. It's literally just one tiny little brown area. And then the rest is just <laughs> nothing. The UK, very highly, very dense. The population density is very high or very highly populated. Oh, the whole of India is just brown. Same with China other than the, the mountain side. I'd actually know. Wait, is, is, wait, China is in part of the Himalayas, isn't it? But there's just a lot of, The ground here isn't anywhere that, like similar to the other side of China. That's where the population is low there. But there's... You know, obviously the US. Brown, a lot on the East Coast. And then obviously California. Number of people per kilometer squared. The lighter areas indicate 0 to 10 people per square kilometer in different God, states damn. and provinces across zero the globe. Ten. Empty looking areas like Canada, Russia, and China's Tibet province come as no surprise thanks to elements like their rugged terrain and harsh weather. But the most densely populated areas such as the east coast of China, India, and parts of Europe contain over a thousand people per kilometer squared. You can this not makes show Asia the most densely populated continent with 4.6 billion people That's living on surprise. it. Followed but I didn't know the, the numbers. I, I always would have thought because of India and China alone that the population in that, in that continent, in Asia, is going to be way higher. But Asia alone has more than half of the world's population. That's nuts. By Africa with 1.3 billion. Europe at 747 million. Latin America and the Caribbean at 653 million. Because Europe is quite small, isn't it, for a continent? Then so. North America with a sparse 368 million. That's why million. the density is so and high. And finally, Oceania with just 42 million. Suddenly it doesn't feel so crowded in here. The U.S. versus the moon. It's hard to put into perspective just how vast the United States oh, is. Oh shit, this is going to be an so interesting So how one. about we use the moon for scale? The moon has a constant diameter of 3,474 kilometers, which is only 27% of Earth's diameter of 12,715 kilometers pole to pole. Using this, you can get a better picture of just how big the states really is. Jeez. And that's without including Alaska or Hawaii. From point to point in this image, which is from Point Arena, California to West Quaddy Head in Maine, the U.S. measures 4,654 kilometers across. As it is, this version of the states can take up about 50% of the moon's circumference. Can Sit someone down. go and dig Neil Armstrong back up? We've got work to do. <laughs> what? Antipodes, Matt. Ever wanted to make an Earth sandwich? It's when you place two pieces of bread on exact opposite points of the globe. I'm not making this up. This is honestly what kids get up to these days. Well, if the inclination what? ever arose to try and make this, you'd need an antipode map. Antipodes on a sphere like Earth are the pair of points farthest away from each other. So if you tried to make this sandwich anywhere in the U.S., you'd need a friend way out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. There oh, wow. are actually very few places on land with corresponding the UK? antipodes. Greenland to Antarctica might be a good bet. Spain and New Zealand could work. Or maybe a spicy Argentina and China sandwich. Sometimes you just gotta love the internet. Wealth <laughs> distribution in America. That's pretty wild. That's some Reddit, Reddit type stuff. Not just that divide America. Wealth distribution sets harsh boundaries across rural and urban populations alike. The census taken by ESRI in 2018 highlights household incomes of city regions in four categories. Light blue dots on these maps show households earning over $100,000 a year. So they're living in good. Purple, it shows 50000 Living good as well. 
In pink, it's fifty thousand to twenty. Still living 000. decent, like very good orange, as well. They earn less than twenty five thousand. A so sweep good. over <laughs> Los Angeles reveals that low earnings are centralized within the innermost part of the city around the downtown this, this is a wild and South Los mind. Angeles area. But the coastal regions of Santa Monica, Torrance, and Orange County are populated almost exclusively by those earning over a hundred thousand dollars. In contrast, New York has a district neighborhood wealth boundary between Manhattan and the Bronx. What? This isn't exactly news, but it does show that there is. That's insane! How split it really is. It makes you realize. Jeez, that's a crazy like split there very little in between with households earning over 25,000 pushed much further out into Queens but then all surrounding areas exclusively populated by those earning a hundred thousand or more zooming out gives you a look at the bigger picture the distribution Jeez. over the United States shows a clear distinction between rural and urban areas rural states like Mississippi Kentucky and Georgia are home to the country's highest concentrations of poverty with urban cities like New York, Chicago, and Washington providing hubs for insane amounts of wealth. Washington is for toddlers I guess and communists. Where the, the government Mercator are, right? projection. Now for the map schools were afraid to teach you about. This is an accurate map of the world, right? Wrong. Oh, we're gonna see the this size. This is the commonly known differences. Mercator projection, a map designed in 1569. It became a standard as it followed a constant linear scale, making it easier for sailors to navigate the world. As a side effect of this, the map inflates the sizes of objects away from the equator, making them seem much bigger when in reality, they're only a fraction of the size. If you want the real sizes, take a look at this animation made in 2018, that which corrects the Mercator projection to reflect so. the relative size of each. Like, I always thought the Scandinavian, country, Scandinavian countries were huge, because they, well, they're still quite big in comparison to Europe. But like, you see them on the map, they look massive, and then you see this, and it's just so different. Country. So in the original, Greenland appeared the same size as Africa, but its mass could actually fit inside Africa Holy shit. times over. Russia appeared to be about four what? times the size of America, but is only about twice the size. So more Still comparable huge. to South America. <laughs> and Alaska takes up as much area on the map as Brazil, when, if anything, Brazil is almost five times larger than Alaska. You may have gone to it school, but you still got learning to do. Poles of inaccessibility. Do you hate people? Like, all people? Then I have the perfect map for you. This is the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility. Fuck it shows that. the place on Earth where you would be the furthest away from any landmass. It that. lies in the South Pacific Ocean about 2,688 kilometers from the nearest point of land. It's so remote that the closest human beings to it sometimes are the astronauts that pass overhead in the International Jeez. Space Station. Now that's some serious solitude. What? On the other end of that spectrum... Bro, imagine you get stranded there as well. You are done Here's for. a map for people who have an unadulterated hatred for water. Or rabies. This is the most extreme continental what? pole of inaccessibility. The point where you are the furthest away from any ocean. It's located in northwestern China, close to the Kazakhstan border, Rivers and is thought to be lakes, almost 2,645 kilometers from the nearest coastline. That's it's wild, a thalassophobic's paradise. I don't know what's worse, that or the other one, to be Light honest. pollution. Let's move on Probably to a lighter ones. topic. Literally. Light pollution around the world gives a clear indicator of the most the UK is just all lit up. areas God by damn. kicking huge amounts of light into the atmosphere from man-made sources. This map uses a visible infrared imaging radiometer suite to measure the zenith sky brightness. Some of the brightest sources you can easily pick out come from cities such as New York, Chicago, Shanghai, and Tokyo, as well as some others you might not expect, like almost all of the Netherlands and Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. Notably Jeez. missing from the map are supposed world powers like North Korea, which is almost completely dark. Biggest army in the world, laughably small power supply, always a promising combination. <laughs> Polluted rivers map. Sadly, pollution comes in many forms, and it's gotten so bad we can now accurately estimate where a lot of pollutants like plastic are being pumped into our oceans. The company Ocean Cleanup have created this probabilistic map showing hotspots of plastic pollution around the world. 
Areas such as Manila Bay in the Philippines are indicated to contain rivers which carry a combined 316,000 oh tons of plastic into the sea every single year. Holy the Klang shit, River of Kuala Lumpur alone carries over 15,000 tons into the ocean, and the Ulhas what? River of Mumbai drags along 16,600 tons. The contrast of river pollutants from Asia to America is staggering and highlights how current international business practices and use of cheap materials from these export countries is really taking its toll on our oceans. This leads to the death of a lot of marine wildlife, as well as increased water toxicity around the world. Remember, you are what you drink. Seas of Get plastic. out of the cinema, man. Get a filter to still, that's me. The sea is just the beginning. It's estimated there are over 5 trillion plastic pieces with a combined weight of 268,940 tons currently washing around in our oceans. And this map from Dump Park shows the current... I don't know if it was in a reaction video to this or I was watching a video where they've made these things where like they put them in the ocean and it sort of sucks them in like this bag. They float and it sort of sucks the rubbish in the bag. I think it's qu quite, quite wild to be honest. Like, it seems like such an easy invention but... It could change everything. I don't know if they're in use now, but if anyone knows what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments or what, because I'd love to know if they're actually in use now. The current distribution of those pieces. Just because America didn't look like it was dumping plastic doesn't mean it isn't effective. The North Atlantic Ocean contains an approximate 930 billion plastic pieces, Jeez. many of which are gathering along the country's east coast and having a severe effect on coastal environments and the fishing industry. But countries in the North Pacific Ocean should be quaking in their boots, with 1.9 trillion pieces of plastic at a weight of 96,000 tons clogging up their shorelines. So when buying and disposing of plastic from now on, just two powerhouses. WWGTD, what would Greta Thunberg do? <laughs> What's she doing now? I've followed her for death a Matt. No, no, she followed her, followed her, but I know she was all over like the internet at one point. What's she doing now? Just doing nothing, thing, doing talks around the world. I mean, I don't pay attention to... Pay, I can't talk right now. I can never talk. I don't pay attention to her, and I never really have. But she's just doing good for the world, I guess. So keep doing it, man. Keep slaying, queen. But pollution <laughs> like this me. isn't just about saving the world. It's Look about at that. saving people as well. And this map from it's the Global strip. Alliance on Health and Pollution, data has been gathered on the human effects of modern pollution. That's pollution stemming from industrial activities like air, chemical, and soil contamination. This shows how many deaths per million have been caused by pollution and where it hit worst in the world. The highest area affected is Somalia, which is estimated to have 3,261 deaths per million caused by pollution. In the US, that shrinks to 483 deaths per million. Surprisingly, the lowest deaths on the map are recorded in Brunei with 95 per million. This tiny country actually has the third cleanest air of all measured countries and is rated by how? many international agencies as well. See, how does that work? Because it's near, like, a lot of the countries in this area, like, there are, like, there's a lot of pollution and stuff. Like, here, the sort of island countries and also, like, obviously, India and China. And obviously, in the grand scheme of things, they're miles away. But surely the pollution travels to a certain degree to here, but maybe not. It looks beautiful as well. One of the most livable places in the world. But this is also a place where swearing carries the death penalty. Oh, so maybe not. I take that acclaim. Because I swear all the time. I swear too much of anything. And swearing carries... No, that can't be true. No, that is not true. What? Brunei swearing. By stoning? Oh, hell no. <sighs> Jesus. With a pinch of salt. It's beautiful, though. <laughs> Mapped by most valuable brands. If you were to take the top 500 brands from around the world and represent each country with their top performing brand in that list, what would that look like? Well, these results were taken from the 2020 valuation UK's of the brand directory's top 500 brand valued companies. Wait, Lego it comes seems from Greenland? What? Lego comes from Greenland? Wait, 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 wait. Lego... 
Where was Lego? God, I'm so dumb. Where was Lego created? Denmark. So it's. This is Bill in Denmark. But I feel like Denmark owns. Um, Greenland. I oh, know it is here. It is actually in Denmark. Okay, so I don't know why it says Lego here. Top 500 brand valued companies. It seems obvious that Amazon would be the top dog yeah. in America. So Only many there. Rose the number one in June of 2019, overtaking both Google and Apple with a huge God, US has got some $20 billion big dollar valuation. Man. Other tech savvy top earners are South Korea's Samsung with a staggering $94.4 billion. In the banking sector, China's ICBC boasts the highest brand value with over $80.7 billion, along with Esper Bank in Russia at $12.8 billion. Despite climate protests, oil and gas giants Shell are still the most valuable Netherlands brand at and a half billion. And Saudi Arabia's new company Saudi Aramco is hot on Shell's heels at 47 billion. Brands synonymous with their countries such as Germany's Mercedes, Japan's Toyota, India's Tata, Sweden's IKEA, and even Italy's Gucci are the top of their respective country brands. But there are several countries that you'd expect to see represented in that top 500, which aren't on the shelves. Eastern Europe may look dark, but after its lengthy and costly time under Soviet rule, they're just now entering a golden economic era. It's gonna boom, An economic yeah. flux that's also reflected in the growing post-Soviet economies of Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan. Central Africa, on the other hand, has suffered from poor infrastructure, a limited tax base, scarce private investment, and adverse external conditions, making any big brand growth a hard thing to cultivate. New Zealand also surprisingly didn't make the cut. Woolworths? Fair, Woolworths is like a shop in it. Wait, but I swear that shut down. It was in the UK and it shut. There's a lot of pausing in this, I don't even care. I want to see, wait, because in the UK it shut down. Is it a different one then? So it says it was founded in Liverpool, which is obviously in England, but it's in Australia. I'm so confused. Yeah, is this Woolworths? I have no idea then, because it says it's Australia, but I'm so baffled. <laughs> Their economy has only been converted to a comprehensive industrialized base in the last 40 years. All in all, I'd say this is a brand new way of looking at the world. <laughs> It's a cool view though, I like these sort of imports ones. and exports map. To end this, here's a couple of maps that might challenge what you previously thought about World Trade. The World Trade Organization released its 2019 trade profile on each country earlier this year, detailing which countries conduct the most merchandise trade with one another, so trade excluding all commercial services. When we visualize that using flags to represent each country's primary import partner, this is what the map looks like. China unsurprisingly dominates the import market of a lot of the world's superpowers thanks to crucial exports like electrical equipment, machinery, and computers. But China itself is heavily reliant on trade from the combined power of the European Union for things like agricultural products, mining, and fuels. In oh, a wow. twist of perspective, key power players like Russia, India, Israel, and Saudi Arabia also listed the European Union as their biggest trade partner for imported goods. Seeing as the Union contains oil and gas supergiants like the Netherlands and manufacturer masters such as Germany and considering China's economy is actually showing signs of slowing down, that makes a lot more sense. But if we flip on its head and show the export market of all these countries, now we can see superpowers like the USA begin to play a big Especially role. In Europe. Both China and Europe export most of their goods to the USA, which imports a lot of produce like alcohol, coffee and bread, and non-agricultural products like cars, oils and computers. Russia, the United States and Israel export most of their goods back to Europe whose top imported products are oil, mobile phone tools, computers and agricultural produce like coffee, soya beans, palm oil and cocoa beans. And as you'd expect, China pretty much dominates most Southeast country exports like South Korea, Japan and Australia. But you've got to admit, without context this map makes it look like the EU and China are plotting to take over the world. <laughs> Which of these maps did you find cool the most video, intriguing? Cool video, man. It's cool to see the the world like being as universal as it is. Is that the right word? Probably not, but yeah, it's cool to see. And I see this this Snickers from now. What's happening with Snickers at the moment? Are they trying to ban like the name or something? 
I've not even looked into it. I, I really don't look into this sort of stuff. I just sort of see it trending on Twitter and I'm just like... Um, I just don't pay attention to any of it, man. I can't be asked to hear people complaining about such weird, just unneeded stuff. What is happening about snake? It's not popping up. But God, I should really look into this myself. Um, but yeah, maybe you'll let me know in the comments if you watched it this far. But hopefully you enjoyed. Again, the map videos are always fun to do and I'm always down to do more. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.